Hey everyone, Justin from Core Performance coming to you from the inside of my home where my wife and I keep some of our emergency water stores. Uh, as everybody knows by now, we're in the midst of some unprecedented times with a, essentially a voluntary national quarantine uh, and shelter in place orders uh, in effect for a good part of the country, especially in some of the harder hit areas like San Francisco, Seattle, uh, that sort of thing. So we wanted to share some tips for uh, our friends and our customers who live in high density, multifamily housing, uh, apartment buildings, uh, condo high rises, downtown urban areas, kind of like uh, here in the Washington DC metro area, where it might be hard to, to store a couple weeks worth of supplies uh, in a 450, 650, uh, thousand square foot space. Uh, so we just kind of Wanted to share some tips about what we do. Hopefully they'll be helpful for you guys. You can kind of take what's helpful, leave what's not. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, I probably would not have thought to, to make this video um, because I thought we would have enough lead time uh, traditionally to, to deal with a water shortage problem. But yesterday I got a very stark reminder, uh, despite us being prepared for these types of situations, our water service went out. Um, here for my wife and I, and it went out all day yesterday. Luckily, I had enough time to fill my water bob, uh, which I can put some some video links into here so you can see what that looks like. Uh, but the water bob's not particularly useful. The reservoirs are not particularly useful uh, for people who live in high density areas because often uh, places can have one, maybe two bathrooms if you're lucky. Sometimes they don't even have a bathtub at all. Uh, so not super practical. We want to put some tips out there that are practical for just about everybody. Uh, and the reality is that losing water service today is actually a real possibility. And it's important that you be prepared for that uh, so that you don't uh, become part of the problem and you can, you can prevail in the situation. So a couple different ways to store water. Um, and everybody's kind of familiar with them. And we'll start with... Uh, let's say, well, I've got this right here, right? It's the one gallon jug. Okay, so one gallon jug, commonly available, uh, but only about 51% of the cube space here is used to uh, store water. And that's not super efficient. Uh, that's actually pretty bad, especially when you don't have a ton of space, right? So um, it's cheap. Okay, great. But it's not wearable. And if you want to carry multiple of these things, you kind of have to grip them like this. And you're looking at, okay, great. I can carry 128 ounces. Sweet. <laughs> okay. But you're not carrying anything else in here. Okay. Uh, and the other problem that I really don't like with one gallon jugs is this. Okay, so we can put a one gallon jug here. Great, okay. Well, when your space is small, stacking and going vertical, right, is how you make more efficient use of your footprint. That's why it's called a high rise in the first place. So if we wanna create a high rise of our water, we can't. Uh, jugs, not super efficient that way, right? So another common way people love to rush for bottled water, creating a hysteria and a panic at the store in the process, and frankly, killing the environment in the process because this crap has a ridiculous carbon footprint. You got a bottle at the source, you got to drive it to a, a distribution center, drive from the distribution center to a grocery store or uh, a, a big box retailer, and then you drive to go pick it up at the retailer or Amazon drives it to you. Uh, so not only are you driving it multiple times, you're transporting it over land, you're doing so with full weight, right? I mean, uh... A, pound, a gallon of water weighs, I think, 8.34 pounds, right? So uh, just do the math. A tiny little 16-ounce bottle of Dasani, 16.9 fluid ounces, weighs 1.1 pounds. You're just driving that around three times? Like, that's terrible. Um, so bottled water, maybe the worst option. Uh, this thing's not great, uh, but bottled water is even less efficient. And we'll put some links in the show notes as well as this article uh, to our article on the best emergency water storage options, where we have a table that shows you all the different space, uh, cube space uh, efficiency ratings um, and capacities and uh, different options so that you can compare and contrast uh, to see for yourself. So enter Ice Plate Curve Seconds program. Okay, now we started the Ice Plate Curve Seconds program because we wanted to be able to get the advantages of uh, water storage that ice plate curve can present and can deliver to people in the hands of more people, especially those in need uh, at this critical time. So the ice plate seconds program is basically, we have ice plates that um, don't pass 
quality control standards for duty use. So they're not rated for military, law enforcement, first responders, and that sort of thing. Uh, but they're still perfectly good water storage containers and um, would be perfectly fine in a pinch. And, you know, if you're pretty well prepared, you have multiple tiers of your preparations. I and mean, I can give you multiple examples. I have two or three tiers of ammunition that I keep around, okay? Uh, I have a pretty sufficient first line uh, supply of duty ammo, but you know, I can't afford to keep a, a extreme backstop of duty ammo. So I back up my duty ammo loads with, um, you know, either ball or reloads or whatever stuff that I know that works, but it's just not quite as, it's not federal HST, right? Uh, but it'll work in a pinch. And that's kind of, uh, our theory behind the ice plate seconds program is that, yeah, this is not rated for duty use. Okay. This is designed to store water in a stationary and static capacity for you for times like this. And then if you have to wear it, if you have to shoot your second tier ammo, right, then you can, and it'll work for you. It's just not something you would want to depend on for duty day in and day out. For that, we have ice plate curve first line program, but for storage ice plate curve seconds program is perfectly viable. This thing's not going to leak. Uh, it really is just cosmetically blemished, <laughs> to be honest. And sometimes it can have uh, thinner sidewalls and whatnot, so it wouldn't withstand uh, certain rigorous applications and uh, encounters that you would have in the field, but it'll be just fine if it sits in your apartment, your condo, your home, uh, and then you kind of just bust it out when you need to. So a few other uh, just basically three quick advantages that an ice plate can present for emergency water storage over any of these other things like a uh, one gallon jug or hideous, you know, disposable single use bottled water. Uh, number one is uh, portability. Okay. So uh, ice plate is easily portable and it's also wearable, right? So I just made this improvised handle real quick at Home Depot, two bucks, paracord, two square knots, and a five inch section of PVC pipe. So that in the event that my wife and I have to for whatever reason, bug out or um, e and &E and uh, put that plan into action, right? I can just grab this and pick up all of my ice plate curves and then I can go and carry easily eight ice plate curves, which is a sufficient uh, supply of water for one person for 72 hours per CDC guidelines. And I have a second stack below here for my wife. So in one hand, I can carry 72 hours worth of water. In two hands, I can carry 72 hours worth of water for two people, for both of us. That's incredibly efficient, right? In one hand, I mean, I'm not Shaquille O'Neal, but <laughs> most people are not gonna be able to carry uh, eight of these things in one hand, right? So I wear a size medium glove and I can carry two of these in one hand. Uh, even if you have extra large gloves, good luck carrying eight. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. The next advantage that Ice Play Curve has over these other things uh, is storage density. So if you look at this this footprint here, right, we got a case of Dasani bottled water here, and then we got uh, 16 ice plate curves here. Well, these 16 ice plate curves uh, take up a smaller footprint than this case of Dasani, and they store more water. So even if we were to stack the Dasani cases to the same height as the ice plate curves, they would still be storing less water and still taking up more space and are less stackable. You also can't wear them. And if you want to transport a case of water, best case is you're going to have to use two hands to carry this case. And again, this is only 24, 16.9 fluid ounce bottles. It's not enough. And you've used both hands. Okay. Use both hands here. And in one trip to the truck or one trip to your vehicle uh, for your E&E &E plan, you've got 72 hours worth of water for two people. So those are just a few tips. Um, Ice Play Curve is also totally environmentally sustainable. It's made from uh, high density polyethylene. It's BPA free, FDA certified, made right here in the United States. And in terms of its carbon footprint, it only gets trucked from uh, our OEM partner, blow molding partner, uh, to us and then from us to you. And we're only shipping about 12 ounces. So it's super lightweight, um, basically nothing uh, to ship and very, very efficient. So it comes to you, can be reused for years and years and years uh, safely. And uh, in a pinch, you could you could wear it. If you're buying from the Ice Plate Seconds program, if you're buying from the Ice Plate class, uh, Curve First Line program, then <laughs> you're good to go and you can use it for anything. So hopefully those tips are helpful for you guys. Um, again, 
uh, we're here for you guys anytime. So you have questions, comments, you need some advice, whatever, please feel free. Hit us up in the comments below. Please subscribe. And uh, we're here for you guys anytime. Let us know if you have any questions. Until then, stay frosty.